I should probably name this YouTube series, What Will I Kill This Season? Hey guys, how's it going? Gardener Sean here, and I'm giving you a Day 15 update. Today is April 20th, and everything is doing fairly well here. I wanted to point out my zucchinis. These are the Black Beauty variety. Hope the camera picks that up there. And I planted these too early. I planted these, I, seed, I sowed them in soil on April 4th. They germinated maybe April 8th, and we're now at April 15th, and these are monsters. Now, generally, zucchinis, tomatoes, eggplants, they prefer warm weather, warm air temperature, warm soil. If you were to plant them out there before the frost date, they wouldn't grow that well. If you plant them right after the frost date, they might grow a little, but their growth will be stunted. Now I wanted to show you here the root ball. Now these zucchinis were the fastest growing vegetable out of all the seeds I planted. And as you can see, they are just about root bound. You know, very good root growth here, but I don't wanna leave them in these seven ounce cups too much longer. When a seedling or a plant gets root bound, it gets stressed out, um, it doesn't grow as fast. In some cases it will just stop growing, in some cases it will start to flower early because it's not able to send um, any more leaf or root growth out. So what I'm going to do is take this 7 ounce um, soil ball and put it into I believe a 16 ounce cup. As you can see we're going to have a lot of additional room for soil and that's going to be great because I'm going to have to keep these eggplants, sorry these zucchinis, inside my house for a little bit longer. So I think I'm going to start a few more zucchini seeds just in case these ones don't work out. But I, it is my intention to plant these outside still. And what I'm gonna do is plant them inside my plastic greenhouse row covers. So it will, the, the plastic covers will give the soil a little bit of extra warmth with the sun beating down on it all day. The soil will retain its temperature a little better than the soil without a cover on it. And the plastic greenhouse covers will also offer me frost protection. Sometimes before or after your frost date, you can get pretty significant uh, frost overnight and you don't want them to kill off your plants because the zucchini is not a frost hardy plant like lettuce and radishes are. Fortunately, the eggplants that I planted around the same time as the zucchini are not that big. As you can see, the eggplants on the left side are much smaller than the zucchini. Um, that's mostly due, be, due to them germinating a lot slower, so they just didn't have that head start to grow. But I imagine now that the eggplants have their starting leaves out, they are going to pick up growth. I'm hoping the eggplants don't reach a massive size within the next four weeks, because the eggplants, like I said, they also like warm soil, warm uh, average air temperature, and these took a little bit longer to germinate, so I don't really want to plant a second round, or a third round, I should say, because a week a week or so ago, we did plant a second round of eggplants because we weren't sure if these ones were going to come up. But they did come up, most of them, except for one. Uh, they were just late to germinate, so that's all. All in all, everything's looking good. Everything else seems to be doing fairly fine. Let's grab some tomatoes here, take a look at these. The tomatoes are doing all right. You can see a first set of leaves coming in, the, the true leaves. They're not the starting leaves that come off of most seedlings. So that's great. Once the first set of leaves come in, you can start feeding your plants a half strength fertilizer if you haven't been doing so already. I would hold off on feeding your plants a half strength fertilizer um, when you sow the seeds and a week or so afterwards because in the seed husk, the plant or vegetable actually has all the nutrition it needs to set off the first set of starting leaves. So you don't need to give any more additional nutrition for those plants. And what else do we got here? Got some beets and we got some radishes. Now the radishes were first to pop up before the beets. The beets were about maybe behind three to five days. As you may or may not be able to see, the radishes, um, this one isn't the best example, there's some bigger ones further along, but the radishes are starting to get their first set of true leaves in, which is great. Uh, the beets seem to still be on their starting leaves, but they're growing just as fine. 
the beets and radishes we're going to get out fairly soon in the next couple weeks. Now our frost date potentially is still four weeks away, but I am making greenhouse row covers to put over my raised beds and that will give my um, early hardy plants a bit of frost protection if the nights do dip down below negative zero Celsius. And here we have two varieties of sunflower. I may have planted these a little early too, I'm not exactly sure, but we're going to try and take care of them as best as we can. On the left we have a Fantasia variety and on the right we have a Kong variety. I believe the Fantasia variety is a little bit multicolored. You might get some oranges, some dark yellows, etc. And the Kong variety is just very tall and has a very big, round, fluffy flower, kind of like a teddy bear. I, I think it's like a teddy bear. It looks nothing like a teddy bear. And what else do we got here? Take a little peek around. Ah, I'm really happy about these. Okay, so the marigolds started off super small and I wasn't sure, you know, if their growth was stunted, if they were dampening off, if they had maybe a bit of um, a problem with the soil, disease, infection, mold. But as you can see, the second set of leaves are coming in on the marigolds and they're looking really good. I've never grown flowers before. This is new to me. Uh, it's pretty exciting. I'm really excited as you can obviously tell. Um, and this is great. Uh, flowers are wonderful. They, they look nice. They smell nice. They, they feel nice. Do flowers feel nice? You shouldn't feel flowers. You might damage them. But anyway, um, I'm really excited about the idea of companion planting. I'm excited to get some flowers in and around my, my yard, my garden to attract in the pollinators. There's a lot of benefits to putting flowers in your garden, whether that's just laying them around your yard or sowing them directly with your vegetables. Some of those benefits are um, insect and like aphid control, any harmful insects or beetles or something like that that might attack your plant. Sometimes the flowers scent or the, um, the, the way they interact with the environment can repel uh, harmful bugs and insects. So that's really cool, protect your plants. But more importantly, flowers produce big, beautiful flowers that attract bees, pollinators, and other flying insects that will jump around to your plants and spread the pollen. So for anyone growing um, zucchinis, eggplants, that generally need to be pollinated, you can pollinate them yourself with the male and female flowers, but it is a little bit time consuming and tedious. Um, why not let nature work for you? Bring in some bees, give them a food source, give them something to do, make them happy, and in return, they'll help you with your garden. I really like the idea of working with nature and other insects and kind of coexisting and having a good relationship with each other. I can help the bees and the bees can help me. Let's take a quick look at the rest of the vegetables that I'm growing. So the tomatoes are looking pretty darn good. They were a little bit stressed out when I brought them outside the first day. I left them out for a little too long, but they are bouncing back. They're doing great. God, those marigolds are doing so good. I'm so happy with the marigolds. Got some marigolds, got some radishes, tomatoes, Kong sunflower, Fantasia sunflower. These large fellas here are the zucchinis. As you can see, the shelves may look a little empty compared to our last video, and that's because I've changed things around. I no longer have my succulents here and my jades. I moved them up here, gave them their own little spot, and that freed me up some space to utilize these lights I had under here. So these lights are really close to the plants, and I did that for all the plants that just need a bit of an extra boost. You can barely see the leaves coming up there. That's the basil. I'm not sure if that's going to grow. Looks like it's having a hard time. Oh, this one's getting fairly bigger compared to yesterday. That's great. Let's check out the pansies. They're strengthening up a little. Just like the marigolds, they had a slow start, but then the marigolds really started to blow up. So I'm hoping the pansies do the same. Here's some good marigolds that are coming up. Now I'm not sure if I should thin these. 
I'm just going to leave them as they are and make that decision when I transplant them into a bigger cup or a pot outside. We still don't have very much growth on the sweet potato. I'm kind of writing that off for the year. I'm a little disappointed, but I'm going to leave it for now and still try and take care of it. If we get any growth, then that'll be an additional vegetable that we can plant in our garden. All in all, things are doing good. Let's try not to kill myself while I step on this stool here. Now at first glance, you must be thinking, what the heck is in these cups? I sprinkled a little bit of cinnamon on here. It apparently helps with fungus forming and potentially helps with fungus gnats. Now it was a little bit of an experiment. I sprinkled a bit on half of each of the lettuces. I just want to do a bit of a comparison to see what I find. Oh, this is exciting. So as you can see, we got some growth happening. But things look a little, a little funny. Let's get some better light here. Now I think the roots, sorry, I think the seeds need a little bit more soil put on top. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit more soil on top and lightly wet it. I may not have put enough soil on top when I sowed these into the soil. Cause it looks like the seeds are doing some weird things there. Let's see what's going on with this one. Now this one's looking a bit better. You can see, or maybe you can't see, um, the seed trying to come up there. It's kind of bent around and eventually it's gonna force its way up and as it pulls up, the soil will hopefully hold on to the seed and the plant will pull right out of the seed and the ground and start looking for light. So that'll probably be up by tomorrow morning and we'll have to keep an eye on the rest of these. That's exciting. I only sowed these a few days ago. We better check the rest of them over here while we're up here. Now, I don't expect any of the peppers to come up anytime soon. Quite frankly, they're a pain in my butt. <laughs> but I'm sure everyone has a different experience with peppers. Yeah, nothing here. Um, I don't think I mentioned this in the previous video, but these weren't all peppers. There are only six peppers and the rest is a variety of spinach. So the spinach and the two varieties of lettuce and our beets and our radishes are going to be the first that we plant outside. And we may even start um, a second round of seeds to sow in succession. That way we don't eat the first round of our crops. So every two weeks, we'll essentially have a new round of crops from, to pick from. And if we pick a little bit from our crops every day or a few times each week, they'll actually produce more. So you can either wait for your crop to fully grow and then pick it all at once or pick little bits and leaves off your lettuce and spinach as they grow. One thing you can do, and I'll probably get into this at a later video, is to prevent any plants from flowering too early. Because what happens when a plant flowers, it starts to send its energy into growing flowers and growing fruit and sends less energy into the roots and into the leaves. So if you're still at an early season in your growing stage, you don't want your plants to flower. You want to take those flowers off and tell the plant, hey, we don't need to make flowers or fruits right now. What we need to do is focus on our root growth and our leaf growth. And in doing that, you'll get a stronger plant. And then a few weeks later, it can start to focus on fruit and flower development. And you'll get more fruits because you now have a more stronger and broader plant to hold on to those fruits. Well, that's it for today's video. I just wanted to thank each and every one of you for watching, and I hope I motivated you and encouraged you to do some gardening of your own. Like I've said in previous videos, gardening isn't that hard, and sometimes the hardest part is to just take that first step and learn what you need to do. So I encourage you to get some soil, to find some maybe margarine or potting containers, and to plant some tomato seeds. Tomato seeds are very cheap. You can get them for a couple dollars and you generally get 30, 40, 50 plus seeds. So I encourage you to start your own garden and to grow your own food. Thanks for watching guys. Feel free to subscribe if you like what you see and I'll see you next time.